One of the am I audible? Yes, audible.
হ্যালো সিদ্ধার্থ হ্যালো সিদ্ধার্থ হ্যালো হ্যালো यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल ओके कैन आई स्टार्ट जस्ट अ मिनट
eminent speakers speaker madam hot sir faculty members and dear participants a very good afternoon everyone and welcome to the fifth and last day of our faculty development program on industrial waste water management iwwm 2023 organized by department of chemical engineering haldia institute of technology in association with iqac hit haldia now we, we are going to start our technical session our today's speaker is simuti songita sengupta scientist at patent information center at west bengal state council state council of science and technology government of west bengal simuti sengupta obtained msc in botany from presidency college university of calcutta then she obtained certificate course dl317 from world intellectual property uh, property calcutta all intellectual property organization geneva sir geneva then she also obtained certificate course dl220 32 dl203 and dl450 from ipo academy she worked as women scientist at type then she worked as project officer at intellectual property facilitation center at wbscst department of science and technology government of west bengal she also worked as research associate ipr at jonal technology management center at indian council of agricultural research currently she is working as scientist at patent information center at west bengal state council of science and technology government of west bengal her expertise is in patents and geographical indication today she will be giving her lecture on overview of ipr now i would like to request Shrimati Sengupta to start our lecture. Uh, Madam, please. Thank you, sir. I'm just trying to uh, share my presentation. <coughs> Is it visible? Yes, my mate is visible. How to bring it into? Uh, Madam, please uh, make it full screen. Ha! Huh, how to uh, do that? Uh, mm. In the presentation, there is your option. In PowerPoint presentation, there is your option. Uh, now it is okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon. So, I have been given the topic intellectual property right and overview. So, uh, I have to. Oh, I will. I think. Uh, what are the background? If I may know uh, of the participants present. Hello. Huh. Madam, uh, participants all are faculty members. Maximum is faculty okay. members, some, some research scholars, but maximum is faculty uh, members. Okay, okay. From, <coughs> I believe, different uh, branches of engineering? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, so uh, do you have any preliminary inform, uh, knowledge about intellectual property rights? Maybe. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's make it inter uh, interactive, otherwise. <laughs> It's very difficult to continue anyway actually one thing ma'am ma'am actually mm -hmm. uh, that that is participants are not in this uh, google meet link they are in uh, youtube live actually so they okay, can't okay. interact directly okay fine <coughs> okay fine mm -hmm. so, so uh, let's start then uh, so what are the <laughs> things we are going to discuss today that we will talk about intellectual property rights and uh, what are different branches of intellectual property rights and a basic idea we will be having of what uh, what is it the intellectual property right all about and then we will know how this intellectual property right regime came in, came into being um, and then uh, we will know the types and followed by some question answer if uh, anybody is interested so i i've been told that this is a youtube presentation so nobody will be asking questions so i think i can speak all by myself anyway uh, so, what is a intellectual property? An intellectual property is a creation of mind. 
a product of noun it is a product of your intellect it may be a artistic work work and invention um uh, some idea which is very innovative and it can be monetized so but when something uh, is a property generally the properties we have house car and all these are properties which can be touched so they are tangible so if you wish to protect your car you can keep it in a uh, closed enclosure you can uh, under lock and key uh, if you want to proceed uh, to protect a house you will put lock you will keep cctv camera secure but how to protect that intangible asset which cannot be touched Mm. and moreover uh, you must have been aware that whenever you buy a uh, property you have to register it with your with government otherwise it is not considered your property so what about this product of mind this intellectual property that we are talking about that is a product of mind how to protect it so there is also a system in our law or in international law so every uh, possible country if there is a system of registration of inter this intellectual property and once you register government confer certain rights to you and there are measures if your rights are violated so what is an intellectual property <coughs> right they is these are a set of territorial rights ma uh, territorial meaning it is limited to the territory or the country in which you are applying suppose you are applying for uh, patent in india you will be given the right within the boundary or territory of india that's why we are calling it territorial right there is no international grant system of uh, intellectual property but there is an international filing system that i will uh, you will it will be clear as we proceed further into this presentation again so um, Okay. Okay. So, uh, so what are intellectual rights? These are a set of territorial legal rights. This right gives exclusivity to the creation of your mind. That is the intellectual property you have created. It allows the creators to control and profit from their work. See, until and unless you are given exclusive rights to this intangible asset, it can be copied. Just in the case of music. So until and unless you give the exclusive right, you will not be able to monetize upon it. If everybody starts copying and producing, then what's your advantage? What your uh, incentive of creating it? And now, what are the advantages it gives to the society? It fosters innovation and creativity into the society. Suppose you are you get uh, you, then there is an exclusivity. Other will also try to uh, invent something which is better than you. because they are inspired by the exclusivity the advantage or the financial advantage you are getting so what this does is it fosters a innovation and creativity into the society and so these exclusive rights are given for a limited period of time sometimes it is 10 years sometimes it is 60 years sometimes it is 20 years depends on the type of intellectual property we are talking about therefore once this exclusive period is over the property falls into public domain and in public domain everybody can use it so uh, so then it fosters a um, uh, innovation and creativity in the society now let's know how this i <coughs> we will call intellectual property right as ipr how this ipr regime came into being now there is an organization you some of you must have heard about is world intellectual property organization it is an international intergovernmental organization which deals with the uh, all the intellectual property around the world so whatever in its uh, intellectual property is protected at uh, is a territorial right and uh, it is protected in, uh, in each country and when you can protect your intellectual property in other country as well. if you are a indian you can get a uh, patent in us and all so uh, dealing with this cross country uh, uh, complications you can say this is the mitigating organization so how this intellectual property uh, culture came into being in this world so for its uh, its initiation started is so initially there was some or the other forms of this exclusive protection people used to keep their uh, invention secret or the 
you must have heard that traditional knowledge that uh, tradition heirloom or something that is a, a secret of the a community that they are not they are only communicating it to their um, inheritant or their progeny and not to the world so some you may, may have heard that uh, some sweet many are making sweet but some sweets has a speciality and when you ask the uh, sweet maker tell it is our uh, a traditional recipe which is secret so this kind of things were existing but first a universal step you want to uh, we want to say is taken up in the year 1883 in paris it is in the form of paris convention now <coughs> what happened is there was an exhibition in uh, in vienna about uh, in 1870 but the foreign inventor and the uh, creator they uh, was reluctant to display their invention or creation in that exhibition because if you, um, such exhibition it can be easily copied so then the idea came that there must be some exclusivity some uh, protection for these the original creator of the invention or the uh, any uh, uh, literary or artistic work then uh, the they were the paris convention was conceived in 1880 then in 1886 Uh, Victor Hugo, you must have heard of the uh, great uh, author Victor Hugo. He uh, was, uh, started a campaign for protection of the literary, literary and artistic work. The uh, for the creators who have created the literary and artistic work uh, for that protection, he started a campaign, and this led to the formation of Berne Convention for protection of literary and artistic work in 1880. Then in 1891, there was a Madrid Agreement for registration of trademark uh, <coughs> this was the of course any of its any of its kind international effort for registration of any uh, ipr international so madrid agreement allowed uh, universal filing of trademark we have to come into the detail um, later this was followed by an association in 1893 which is which is called BIRTI uh, it's a french name but a big one i don't remember the full form it was established for protection of this invention that is uh, what we call as patent and later in 1870 this bond uh, convention BIPR uh, BIRTI and uh, bond convention uh, took hands together and put together they came up with world intellectual property organization which governs all the different forms of ipr that is trademark patent design copyright etc in 1870 and this was came into be and in 1874 wipo joined hand with un and become a specialized agency now what um, joining un gives a uh, uh, wipo an authority what authority is that that the countries uh, the member countries of un can now be the part of wipo they must they are obligated to be a part of wipo and what uh, if you are a member of wipo you have to uh, abide by the uh, laws which a uh, universal agreement which has uh, and a universal set of guidelines related to ipr which was set which is set by I, wipo world intellectual property organization and then wipo came in in 1978 the uh, under patent cooperation treaty uh, patent cooperation treaty system uh, wipo wipo launched the international filing system for different ipr that is patent trademark design but mind it is international filing system and not national grant system you can what pct does is you can file a, a patent application international which allow you a priority date for all in all the member countries in which they are the member of pct but to gain or grant of the patent you have you get 30 to 31 days grace period to go about in each of the countries you are interested like in pct there are about 191 countries but you might not be interested in doing business in all the 191 countries you may select hardly two to three countries so when you are filing an application in pct that date is blocked as a priority date and from that date to 31 days you get the 
a great uh, window period in which you can go to these uh, can, uh, in whichever countries or member countries of PCT you wish to, to get a patent grant and file in that their patent office. But the date, suppose you have filed, you have filed PCT today and 10 days later you went to uh, US patent office. But the but the date of registration of the application will be considered from today. That advantage you get. So that is the advantage the international filing system gives you. It gives you a priority date. Now, <coughs> what are the types of intellectual property rights? Like intellectual property is a bundle of <coughs> properties. Like it has. Mm, creative property like uh, uh, books, music, it has uh, uh, inventive prop uh, properties like uh, inventions which is coming under uh, patent. Then there are new plant varieties people developing, people are developing this, uh, different kinds of logos and um, marks for their products and goods. So these are a bundle of creative uh, uh, products of mind. Now, has different features and based on that there are different laws in protecting his property so uh, in india we have this uh, whatever you are saying these uh, types of intellectual property law and the intellectual properties are protected under this sense that, that is patent trademark industrial design copyright uh, geographical indication plant variety protection ic integrated circuit and trade secret now we will go into details of each of these properties. The first is patent. Mm. Now what are patents? Patents are the protection which is given to invention. The uh, <coughs> it's a set of statutory rights given for an invention and is granted for a limited period of 20 years to the patentee by the government in exchange of full disclosure of the invention. You have to give the full disclosure, disclosure and best way of working of your invention to the government and in exchange the government will give you 20 years exclusive rights. What are those rights? To exclude others, to stop others from making, using, selling, importing the patented product or process for producing that product for those purposes without your consent. So, if you are stopping the people to doing uh, to use, practice your patent, then those who are interested in using it, they have and uh, they have to pay something. You must you can keep condition, you can monetize on it. So that is the benefit of patent. So it is in India, <laughs> it is go governed by Indian Patent Act 1970 and Indian Patent Rule 2003. It is it falls under Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. You can see the website you and you can very well visit it and the head of this office is controller general of patent design and now <clears throat> as i was talking now all the mem mm, in the, uh, this intellectual property is a territorial right yeah, and it's a legal right so each country has their own way of defining it and it varies from with country to country based on their culture and jurisprudence. But if un, uh, there are different laws and the laws are drastically different for each country, then an inventor who is want, uh, willing to do business will face problem. So WICO has set up some basic guard, uh, guidelines that for judging the patentability of an invention, there are certain basic guidelines which almost all the member countries of the world for follows. And then there are special laws which vary from country to country. So what are the three cardinal uh, principles or three cardinal criteria based on which patentability is judged in the country across the globe? These are novelty, inventive merit and industrial application. <coughs> now what is novelty? Novelty is defined as a new invention. An in invention is considered novel only if the invention which is known or used is not known or used 
anywhere else or anticipated by prior art anywhere else in the world. Now, what is this prior art? Prior art is the thing which is a document or an information which is already existing in that uh, public domain which dilutes the novelty of your invention. It is as a word which contains or few the attributes of the invention which you have developed. It may be a publication made by you also. If you have made a uh, paper publication somewhere or you have uh, presented it in some conference or you have uh, made the demonstration of your invention somewhere before you have filed for patent, even that will constitute and as prior art and it will dilute or nullify the novelty, <coughs> the novelty of your invention. So your invention will not be fit into it. So he always suggests that before you go for any communication of your invention, if you wish to monetize upon it, please, 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 first go for patent application or patent filing, then submit it to wherever you want. Now, what are the things that comes under prior art? It, is a, it can be a prior publication, it can be an oral communication, exhibition, public user trial, or if your invention is, is in effect a traditional knowledge or it is derived from the traditional knowledge, it will also constitute as prior art. Now, the second important uh, criteria for judging the patentability of an invention is inventive merit. Now, what inventive merit is? It's the technical advantage to the existing knowledge or economic significance or both, which such that it is non obvious to a person still in the art. So, inventive merit <coughs> of the invention is just in a way that if it has a technical advantage or an economic significance. Such that it is not obvious to a person skill in the art. Now, who is a person skill in the art? It's a technical person who is working in your field and have is a similar knowledge as yours. And uh, now here is an example. It may be your peer working of the these door handles or how it is made. So a carpenter who has uh, made the metal handle, suppose the uh, wood handle was existing. And somebody made the uh, metal handle for the first time. For me, it may be a in, uh, genius invention, something very new. And I, I may not uh, know what a carpenter knows. So, a carpenter for another carpenter, it is just the replacement of the material while the functioning is same. And there is no technical input for making a door handle with metal. So, the, the, these two carpenters are, mm, you can say, they are peers or these two are skilled in the same art. So, if it is obvious to another person uh, of your field or your peer, then it will lack an inventive state and the invention will not be fit into it. Now, it's quite an important criteria and a lot of uh, case laws have come up with uh, because of this. That's who will be the person skill in the art, how to judge it, how to uh, uh, come about that this is a inventive thing and not a something which is obvious to the people. Now, the third criteria is uh, <coughs> industrial application. Here you can see the industrial application, the third criteria, which is uh, the thing is it should not be a theoretical invention. It can be industrially produced in mass scale. Uh, to be patentable. Now, these three criteria are almost applicable to the worldwide. Every country in the world follows these three criteria for judging the patentability of an invention. But depending on the culture of the country, and here, I, as I say, their law, their uh, values, some inventions are not patentable. There, there are certain inventions, even if it has novelty, inventive merit and industrial application, it will not be patent. So, is this criteria, uh, group of invention I mean, criteria vary from country to country? In India, it comes under section 3. It is mentioned in section 3 of Indian uh, Patent Act. But what are the criteria, uh, inventions which even if follows uh, or 
is uh, qualifies the first uh, the novelty in inventive medicine in industrial application but will not be considered an invention and will not be granted a patent this uh, this is the under section 3a the first criteria is frivolous in invention suppose we know newton's law we know faraday's law if something is made which counters this established law without giving a valid explanation to it then it becomes a frivolous invention and not patentable suppose someone came with a uh, invention of a perpetual machine so that is not possible and that person is not able to validate is their claim that how this perpetual machine is working so then that in, uh, invention will fall under section 3a and will not be patented then section 3b says invention whose use is against public order or morality injurious to human health animal or plant life or health of the environment <coughs> in general so <coughs> <coughs> any invention which falls under this category will not be patentable so the government of a country has certain miss you might be aware uh, that you cannot uh, do hate speech and there are stuff you uh, which is not allowed in our country even if we have freedom of speech and expression that is the morality each country has its own morality if some invention hurts the morality of the country or the people of the country then that invention cannot be patentable even if it is something ingenious now any device apparatus or machine of it Now, it is our, uh, against our morality. Uh, stealing is against the morality of our country. So, and if anybody comes out with uh, such invention, it won't be patentable. Method of adulteration of food, onco mouse. Now, there is a beautiful case uh, regarding it. I will talk later. Em embryonic stem cell. Uh, uh, what on em embryonic stem cells? Human cloning. These things are against the morality of, and public order, and it may be injurious. Uh, in some case uh, so it won't be patentable now i was talking about onco mouse <coughs> what was the case it was now harvard university developed a mouse and it has tweaked the gene of the mouse to such that the mouse will develop cancerous tumors into it and this type of mouse was developed to uh, to do experimentation of, of cancer on them now harvard is in us in under us law this invention is patentable well when they went to europe um, the european patent office cancelled the pat uh, this patent did not grant the patent based on the morality clause what the state is hurting and this is was injurious to the health of the animal and just to have uh, your experimental work you are hurting the animal so it is uh, against their morality and it is not patented so it, in india also the same thing happened it was not granted based on uh, this section 3b it was again it was injurious to the animal health so it was not patented <coughs> then section 3c says near discovery of scientific principle abstract theory living or non living things occurring in nature are not patented now if you discover archimed uh, this mere discovery of scientific principle now in general if you di discover a principle and you cannot show a machine uh, or working into it it will not fall under industrial application so it won't be patented but even if you have developed now somebody has developed for uh, in some time the archimedes principle but it is a theoretical knowledge it won't be patented now section 3c also says that theoretical scientific principles or abstract theory won't, won't be patentable or any living or non living thing which has you have developed or discovered by the form of isolation from nature it was existing in nature you have just stumbled upon it so it is a discovery and not an invention and it will not be patentable so <clears throat> here you can see that archimedes principle itself is not patentable but if you can make an apparatus using the archimedes principle then it becomes patentable this discovery of naturally occurring microbes are not patentable but if you genetically engineer a micro a micro you using different genes in lab then that genetically engineered micro micro <coughs> becomes patentable now you must have uh, heard about uh, about an 
this oil spill uh, eating microbe. It was uh, de um, uh, developed by a Indian scientist, but he was a um, U.S. citizen, uh, Dr. Chakraborty, and he developed that oil spill eating microbe in lab, genetically modified microbe. And uh, at that time, when they uh, he applied for patent to U.S. And US, U.S. also had this clause in their um, patent act that a naturally occurring micro, microbe is not patented. But, uh, uh, and it was not granted in U.S. patent office. Then he went to court and then the U.S. Supreme Court granted the patent based on the fact that the micro, microbe he developed was not an isolation from nature. It was a lab engineer. So it's a genetically modified organism and it is patentable. Then again, <coughs> naturally occurring gram, uh, occurring gas or minerals are not patentable. But if you are developing a method of isolation, it becomes patentable. Mm, now section 3D. Now section 3D says that mere discovery of any new property or new use of a known substance new use of a known process, machine or apparatus, unless such known process results in a new product or on such at least a new reaction, that invention is not patentable. Now what this uh, section 3D says, uh, like initially aspirin uh, or initially what? In general what we use aspirin for, it's for uh, as a uh, for painkiller, as uh, in fever we use aspirin. But later some scientists uh, um, discovered that it can also be used in heart element. So, use of aspirin in heart element is a new use of a known substance that is aspirin. So, it does not, it is not patentable. As a, no new uh, component, compound has been developed. Only the new use of the compound is developed. The new use of a known substance is not patentable. Uh, you Here you can see that um, a very ingenious uh, way of Heating the milk has been developed, but it's just a known thing. Whatever we uh, we know, we have these all these items we have no we are no, is known to us. We are just assembling it. So then in this case also, this is not a not patentable. Now in case of uh, when we call up about uh, new uh, use of a known substance, the no, Salt, esters, ethers, polymers, metabolites, pure forms, and all these things of, an, of the known substance or forms or derivatives of the known substance is also not patentable unless that derivative has an efficacy. Now, what this efficacy means? There was a uh, famous case or a ground, uh, landmark case in Indian patent uh, scenario. It is called Novartis Gleevec case. What, uh, what is the case about? Now, Novartis developed a drug <coughs> salt of imatinib misylate. What it used? It was used for cancer treatment. Now, uh, when the 20 years exclusive period of uh, its uh, exclusivity uh, of patent was about to expire, Novartis developed a beta, beta crystalline form of this uh, imatinib misylate and tried to patent it as a new drug. Now, it was rejected under Section 3D. Then Novartis went to court and said that the beta crystalline form of imatinib misylate has a better bioavailability. So, it, it is a new, uh, it has a um, new U, not a new use, it has a better function. If something is uh, more bioavailable, then it has a better function. So, it's a new thing. We have developed a new uh, uh, compound which has better bioavailability and um, or the uh, purpose may be same, but it has some added features. But the court says in such cases, when you are may, uh, trying to patent the derivative of a compound already known uh, in public domain, then you have to prove the therapeutic efficacy. So remember this efficacy I was talking about here, the court defined what efficacy means in the law. It says it should have a therapeutic efficacy when it comes to medicine. You have to prove that they, uh, just saying that it is it is more bioavailable, bioavailable will not solve the problem. You have to prove that this new form has a therapeutic 
efficacy for the uh, to show the uh, the purpose for which this drug is used the new uh, form has a better if efficacy than the previous drug then we will consider this as a new drug and not a derivative so since novartis was unable to prove that um, the invention was the beta crystalline form then whatever they were trying to patent was not granted okay section 3e now what section 3e says mere admixture resulting only in aggregation of the properties of a compound is not patentable the famous example is of combifilin aspirin we know is uh, for used in fever so uh, eradicate fever and ibuprofen is a painkiller combifilin is a me medicine which has ibuprofen and paracetamol both into it and it can be used as a painkiller as well as to give relief from fever but combifilin is not patentable why because it is, it is an aggregation of the properties of aspirin and ibuprofen without any significant uh, result in bringing these two drugs together so they are uh, if they what these each individual component is doing they are fun functioning independently of each other bringing together has not uh, given the drug combifilin any additional advantage so it is not patentable mere aggregation of the properties of the component is not patentable until and unless you show show a synergistic effect suppose from uh, combining aspirin and i combining aspirin and i we can uh, show show some um, cure in case of uh, cancer treatment or in heart attack so it it is it is something different from the indi individual properties of the medicine Mm, not the heart treatment because aspirin has a uh, heart treatment uh, property as well so suppose uh, combining aspirin and ibuprofen together to give a uh, effect on curing some kind of cancer which is not which these two drugs do, do not do individually only while combining them together some reaction ha happens or something happens that it you know, gives an advantage in uh, cancer medicine medication then only that combination could have been patented otherwise no now section 3a what it says mere arrangement rearrangement or duplication of known device is each functioning independently of one another is not patentable here you can see an umbrella and there is a fan attached to it so it is protecting you from heat and rain and you are getting air from the fan but these are the individual functions of these uh, items as well if you you have a fan for giving air you have an uh, umbrella for protection just you are combining it together and each of the component is uh, functioning separately independently together they didn't give any significant hard new uh, feature to it uh, to this thing so it is not patentable <coughs> same is the case with the pen with a uh, stylus or pen uh, pencil with a rubber they are functioning individually just to have put this both the things together so it will not be patentable <coughs> section uh, 3h says a method of agriculture and horticulture is not patentable traditional methods like cultivation of uh, algae production of a new form of plant preparation of improved soil these are traditional methods which cannot be patented but if you develop a robot which assist in agriculture that becomes patentable and then this section talks about any process of medical surgical curative prophylactic diagnostic therapeutic or other treatment in human or animal it is not patentable <coughs> like removal of cancer tumor dental plaque surgical processes these are medical processes surgical processes these are not patentable because these are life saving processes if somebody some organization get exclusivity then it can be a problem but having said that if you develop a machine suppose glucometers these are machine for de detection of diabetes detection of uh, handheld pressure uh, detection machine oximeters these are machine even though they are a medical device they are machine they, they can be patentable 
Okay. <coughs> Section 3J, what it talks about plant and animals in whole or any part thereof or microorganism including other than microorganism. Microorganism after diamond versus chakravarti case, microorganisms are separated. But plants and animals, its varieties, seeds, species, essential biological processes, these are not patentable. Like clones of new uh, and new varieties of plant, a process for production of plant. Uh, these are the things that uh, uh, developing a new variety of plant, <coughs> these things are not patentable. But then how to protect this? You have to protect it some way that if somebody has developed a plant with a higher yield or uh, disease resistance, salt tolerance, these things are protected, but under a different set of laws. What are those laws? Protection of plant variety and Farmer Act 2001. This is a separate law only for protection of plant varieties and rights of the farmers. So since there is a separate law, they do not, so they cannot be patented are or protected under patent law. Then section 3K, which says mathematical or business methods or a computer program per se is not patentable. Computer program in India, uh, algorithm, they are not patentable. You can protect it under software, uh, under copyright. You know, software can be protected in copy, under copyright. But if you can incorporate the software in a hardware device and protect that hardware device and in that way you can also protect the software then then that thing becomes patentable but exclusively software programs cannot be patentable now section 3 l says a literally dram dramatic artistic musical work cinematography phonograph all the things that is artistic or aesthetic part these come under copyright protection <coughs> and it cannot be patentable. Now section 3 M, uh, M says a mere scheme or rule or method of performing mental act or, or method of playing game. Now in businesses you have uh, models, people develop models in this, uh, uh, MBAs and business research, a model of doing a uh, business, um, business models which we generally call, those things cannot be patented. You can go for copyright protection. Now, section 3 uh, uh, N, a presentation of information, uh, a speech instruction means in the form of printed text or, um, or some flow chart diagrams, those things are not patentable. Topography of integrated circuit are not patentable. There is a separate law in India, Semiconductor Integrated Circuit Layout Design Act 2000 you can protect a uh, topography of inti integrated circuits under that law and but it cannot be patented. Now section 3p says an invention which in effect is traditional knowledge or which is an aggregation or duplication of the properties of the tradi traditionally known component of traditional knowledge it is not patentable like wound healing property of turmeric is not patentable. Mm, there, somebody tried to patent the um, anti-diabetic property of jamun and when it came to the notice of patent office it was re revoked so anything which is in effect traditional knowledge it is known in the traditional knowledge is not patentable but having said that if you make a composition suppose you have made a un, uh, or turmeric cream for wood healing but it has a longer shelf life so you have made you have added something into turmeric to increase the shelf life of the composition. So that thing can be patentable. So that was not disclosed in traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge only developed the wound dealing property. But increasing the shelf life of that traditional component by adding some component of your own, which is your ingeniousness, that is patentable. Now section four, it inventions related to atomic energy. Uh, in India, it is not patentable. Now the next, IPR or the intellectual property, we will talk about the trademark. Now, what is a trademark? It is a, a symbol, logo, name, or design which relates a product to its origin or the proprietor. So, in, in a way, it helps in building the goodwill of a company and connects the consumers to the company which is 
producing it and if the company is uh, able to establish a quality uh, repute then it it connects the company to that mark and it uh, connects the consumer perception to that company now there are three functions of trademark it connects first as i said its origin function who is the producer of that product who is the producer of that um, water bottle or the computer laptop mobile you have separate fan base people who are buying only apple people who are only faithful to samsung brand so <coughs> what what they are faithful to this name samsung samsung is the trademark of that company and people have, is faithful to the brand and when they see the logo or, or the name samsung into product it is an assurance of quality and guarantee of the producer so if suppose uh, tomorrow samsung uh, do uh, does a business in something which is it's currently into in this uh, electronics it's, start a new business but this fan following will continue because over the years samsung has established a quality guarantee and the credibility into the market so how, what this name samsung is the trademark and it is uh, used trademarks are used by the companies for investment or for adver advertising functions um, and lot of things now the term of protection of the trademark is Ten years. It can be a symbol, word, phrase, logo, design, or combination. So the uh, here in the screen you are uh, seeing Himalaya and Zagua. These are two different trademarks of the same company. If you can guess the company, it's the Tata. So there is a separate fan base of Himalaya, Himalayan mineral water. So Himalayan is the trademark for the mineral water of tata jaguar is the trademark for the car of the tata so these are the two different tra trademarks the company may have more than one trademark for different line of their product now these are the different types of trademark it can be inventive word color combination symbols slogan design number shape of the good in case of coca cola the shape of the bottle uh, has been registered as trademark so when you hold it even the blind person can feel but the sense of touch will give them the connection to that company of coca cola now service marks are the marks it is like trademark but it is associated with service like mcdonald for the uh, food service walmart uh, and at&t is for uh, telecommunication service these are the trademarks now when you see the product somewhere it is written art somewhere it is written C. R denotes, denotes a registered trademark. CM is a trademark that is not yet registered. If you have filed for the trademark and it's not yet registered, you can say you can write on it TM. And SM is for uh, service mark which is not yet registered. Now these are the uh, trademarks which cannot be registered. Any descriptive word like uh, uh, tasty for um, if you uh, are selling some um, pizza and you have kept the trade trademark tasty then it's a descriptive of the food uh, uh, then it is a generic term um, any other person can also sell tasty pizza so descriptive words are not cannot be made trademark marks which is likely to deceive public or cause confusion like dairy milk is a trademark and if you want to use daily milk it sounds similar it may deceive the person uh, a person may misread it so that those kind of deceptive uh, deceptive deceiving marks are not allowed for registration marks which can hurt the sentiment religious sentiment etc then scandalous or obscene trademark those marks are cannot be registered use of uh, emblem or, or name of the nation name is also prohibited for using a trademark now here <coughs> you can see similar or identical of the pre existing trademark this is called passing off so if there is a well known product or well known trademark and you use a trademark which sounds similar or you use a packaging which is 
quite similar to it. So you are trying to ride upon the goodwill of that country. This of consumer is a fan of. Now here is the spectrum of distinctiveness and for level of protection, uh, like Xerox. It's a it is generic term for photocopy machine. It has been used so generically, and the uh, company was not able to protect the uh, their mark. And when it was using as a generic term, they did not take any measures to stop it. So it became into called into categories of generic marks, and it ultimately ceased to be a trademark. Then there are descriptive terms like um, uh, this spray wash, you guys, uh, uh, remove uh, stain remover. If you uh, keep the trademark stain remover, uh, then it it also becomes it cannot. It is a very weak trademark, or it should not be used in, as such because it can easily be uh, bring objection to. Then there are uh, suggestive trademarks. So copper stone, you are suggesting that it's a brand. Of of what the product it is selling, your trademark should not reveal the product you are selling. Then it becomes a very unique trademark. Then there there can be arbitrary words like uh, dub. Now if you hear hear the word dub, you and you don't know, uh, then you cannot guess what the product is they are selling. So it's an arbitrary trademark. Let me there is a meaning of the word dub. It's a bird, but it has no relation to the uh, soap. This is an arbitrary trademark, and it's very useful. It's, uh, it's quite recommended to have such arbitrary trademarks like Apple for computer. And then the best kind of trademarks are inventive words like Exxon. It has no meaning. The word do not have any meaning. So it's an inventive word, and these kind of trademarks are most because uh, we can um, we say it's the best trademark to protect. Now these are the requirements. When whenever you, you want to go for trademark protection, what do you need? It's given in the trade uh, screen. You can see. I'm not going into detail. Uh, trademark that pro protected under class. Now what with the classes? There are one to forty-five, forty-five classes of trademark. Each class has some distinction. Like uh, some class refers to the category of product. Then there are uh, class for Textile goods. There are class class for agricultural goods. There are there is a class for chemical products. So you have to mention under which class you you want to protect your trademark for. Like bata. Then they have to go for leather goods class that they want to protect protect their trademark for leather goods. Or you can go for more than one class also. But in that case there are uh, there is 2500 per class. So uh, you have to select the class accordingly. You have to protect it under those classes which you are interested to work in future or you are working currently. The validity of the <coughs> term of trademark is 10 mark, and then it is uh, 10 years, and it is renewable in every 10 years with the pay payment of the renewal fee. Next is the industrial design. What is industrial design? It's a new and original. Design incorporated to an <coughs> article, and which can be incorporated through industrial means and produced in mass scale. Mass scale, I'm talking about means more than 50. And the, this design, which we are talking about, should be visually appealing, and it should not have any technical function into it. Right. So, suppose in case of corrugated sheet. Corrugated sheet has a zigzag design, but there is a function to it. It gives it. It's a technical feature. The zigzag design of the corrugated sheet has a technical feature. But if we paint the corrugated sheet pink and some or green, then that is becomes the design because that is the aesthetic feature. If you want to buy, if you are buying a green color corrugated sheet over pink color corrugated sheet, that you are Judging it based on your aesthetic appeal and not the function. The color does not have a function here. So this kind of application of the color into that pattern or color into the corrugated sheet that becomes a 
uh, industrial design. So it comes under industrial design protection. It can be 3D, 2D pattern, combination of colors, single color. These are some of the things which, which are protected under industrial design. The, in textiles, you can see there are a lot of patterns. These are uh, registered in postcard set. You can see there are patterns. Then this uh, car, this it has a very unique design. And it's, it's because of that, you know, it, consumer may prefer this uh, card just because of the design. So th that is registered under industrial design. This uh, water bottle, which looks, uh, which is in the shape of dumbbell, this is also an industrial design. And now these are the criteria uh, uh, in which, which is, which decides whether a design will be registered or not. The feature of the design judged by I, no prior publication, new and original product, non-technical or non-functional, as I already said, significantly distinguishable from the prior art, not included under trademark or any other protection, uh, not comprising of scandalous or obscene material, then that is universal. Means, uh, in whichever uh, intellectual property you go, this clause will be there. Scandalous, obscene, morality ground, now, this is the uh, validity and fees, 10 years validity is extendable for, for to another five years. Then it goes into public domain. You cannot renew it further. And the registration fee is 1,000 rupees. Next is the copyright. Now, copyright is a bundle of rights that includes the right of reproduction, communication, adoption, and translation of literary, creative, or artistic work. It has to be original. It can be literary, artistic, dramatic, musical, cinematograph, software, etc. Now, there are a set of rights which is similar to copyright and it is falls under copyright only. We call it related rights. It is the performer's right, phonograph right, or the sound production which we call and broadcaster's right. These are the type of uh, what protected by copyright. And who are the authors? Or in case literary and dramatic work, the author um, is the uh, own, is the authorship is with the author of the uh, work. In music, uh, it is the composer. In artistic or painting, uh, it is the artist. In photographer, the person who has taken the photograph. In cinematograph, it is or sound recording is the producer. And in computer generated work, the person who has written the written the code. And who are the owners? Now, here is a thing. The author need not be the owner. If it is a commissioned work, suppose somebody is paying you to compose a music or compose a literary piece, then the, you may be the author, but the ownership goes to the person who has commissioned the work. And uh, if you are employed in a, uh, some, uh, suppose you are a journalist, you are employed in a uh, news channel, you're employed in a newspaper and here, there you wrote an article. You made the, may be the author, but the monetary or, or ownership of the work becomes of that of the, that company because that company has hired you to produce that work. Now here we are talking about the validity and the fee for original literary dramatic musical work. It is 60 years uh, uh, copyright in addition to the, for the lifespan of the author plus 60 years. For cinematography, film, cop, um, sound recording, photograph, and uh, other things, uh, copyright protections uh, subsist for a period of 60 years from the year of publication. For, for broadcast reproduction rights, it is valid for 20 years, uh, 25 years, and for performance rights, it lasts for 50 years. Now, copyright uh, registration is very simple. Anybody you go to their website, it's very simple steps. You can, you don't need a lawyer for that. You can easily file yourself. 500 rupees pieces per word. And next is the geographical indication. You must have heard about uh, hue and cry about that Rasogolla, uh, the Urissa, Rasogolla, Bengal, Rasogolla. Then what was the thing contention about? It was about geographical indication. What is the geographical indication is, is it's the product uh, whose characteristic feature is the attribute of the place of its origin and in the whatever the characteristics or reputation it has is, is closely associated with the with the origin of its product or the product where it, it was produced 
now <coughs> the duration of protection of this gi is 10 years and the, it is not an individual right it is the right of the community uh, of that product of that product is generally uh, geographical indication is generally for traditional items and the the community which is who is the uh, who has been uh, producing that product through generation and generation they get the right for this kind of product mm. here you can see the darjeeling tea uh, it is uh, there is an association of darjeeling tea growers who is growing the tea in the hills for generations they are the owner of the uh, and that is the tea board and their representative is the tea board so tea board is the uh, owner of this or proprietor of this uh, geographical indication that is jarjeeling tea who's, who is famous for its aroma and its aroma is due to its uh, growing in the uh, foothills of the uh, darjeeling hill region and if you take the plant and grow it in any other place you won't get the same aroma or quality of tea so the this reputation of uh, fine um, aroma of the tea is because of its source or uh, geographical origin where it is produced and it is a geographical indication same goes for handicraft like madur kati which is uh, grown in sabang its rep uh, the reputation of this madur which we use is the fineness and the technique in which it is produced by the artisans of sabang over generation and they have acquired um, the skill of weaving this from their forefathers so that's why the madurs of sabang has a reputation as a market of its own so it is also a geographical indication and the owner is a uh, association of you know uh, artisans of madur so currently since there is no association with the ownership is lying with the khadi village board who is uh, assisting the art uh, these artisans in uh, this production of um, madhu and then there is a joinagar moa which you have uh, you may have heard about uh, the reputation of this moa is due, it is due to its aroma and the um, ingredients it use nolen gur konakchur rice and the artisans who knows the right proportion of these ingredients to use and their uh, skill of cooking to make those moa and it is also a registered gi now gi is all just like trademark gi is also registered under class and these are the five types of gis which is generally granted in our country it can be an agricultural good a natural good a handicraft a <coughs> manufactured product or a food item and now the, um, these uh, the name you can see these are the registered gis under this category now next is trade secret now what qualifies as a trade secret is the secret information it can be a formula it can be a drawing it may be a secret a recipe anything which has some financial value it has some economic value and if it is coming to the public domain then it will lose its economic value and it is known to very few people the people and those people uh, have employed significant measure to keep it a secret so such information is called as trade secret uh, in india we, <coughs> unfortunately we don't have any particular law for protection of trade secrets so generally what um, here is done by the corporate firms and all whenever there is a trade secret they keep it confidential and whenever they are allowing somebody to use uh, that information into business uh, their employees and other stuff then they uh, do a confidentiality agreement and if some somebody use, misuses that uh, trade secret then they can be um, brought to justice by um, under agreement law or contract law so but you have to prove that the information is commercially viable it is uh, viable it is limited to a group of people and you have taken reasonable steps to keep it a secret like all the uh, in uh, documents and everything which has that secret written in it should have that confidential 
tag into it uh, making the people who is handling it aware that these are confidential information and should not be mishandled so that is all about trade secret and uh, in us there is there are significant measures taken like you must have heard about coca cola coca cola composition of the uh, liquid uh, in whatever composition of the uh, drink they are using is the trade secret they has kept it a trade secret and only the um, uh, ceos are aware of the secret and uh, the no two ceo of the company travel in the same flight together um, because if uh, the plane crashes the information will will be lost forever now here is a simple example of how to distinguish between different uh, there's a uh, types of ipr now we have read about patent and we have read about industrial design now this visa this bend in the visa this can be protected under patent because this bend has a significance it enables the user to cut the it is generally used in dissection box and it enables this, uh, the users to cut the up, upper layers of the skin without damaging the lower layer so this bend has a functional significance so it will come under patent protection protection now this color pattern on the scissor it can be pink it can be zebra print whatever when you are going to buy this scissor you if you what this color pattern uh, pattern attributes is it gives it have an aesthetic appeal so if i have a uh, like for this pink color i will go for the pink scissor if somebody has a like for the zebra print that person will go for the zebra print scissor so there is an this this design is has purely aesthetic appeal and no functional importance to this visa so this uh, pattern can be protected under industrial design now here are few names ballab basmati ballab basmati 22 here basmati it's a gi it will the name basmati is protected under geographical indication because whenever we know we hear about basmati what will come comes to our mind mind is the long grain aromatic rice now this long grain aroma of the basmati is because of its geographical location in which it is produced in northern india there is certain genetic plain um, where it is grown in haryana punjab there in the climate and the soil and the, uh, the geographical features of that place gives this rice this typical strong aroma and length but if you uh, that's why basmati is a geographical indication it can be protected under geographical indication and the right goes to not a single person but to the community of farmers over there across the state and this name balla 22 a variety of basmati has been developed which has some salt tolerance or then there are other varieties on this balang balangir which which is giving basmati uh, disease resistance now these things are developed in lab and it is not attributed to any environmental condition it was purely by a person who has done the selection who has uh, done the cross breeding and developed the variety so this can be protected under plant variety protection okay so that uh, comes to the end of my lecture if anybody has any question they can go on. hello yes thank you madam for sharing your knowledge about ipr patent geographical indication and lots of many things i hope our participant will be benefited a lot from this lecture now madam uh, we have this one question from participant shall i read it for okay. you yes sure uh question is published or copyrighted work can be patentable within a year is there any such possibility no 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 see copyright is something uh, literary music artistic work or your uh, uh, even your research paper is a, a copyrightable material but patent is an event if you have published uh, you are talking if you have Uh, published your invention in a research paper you get that one year grace period there is criteria you cannot get that grace period you only the grace period of 
one year is available in cases. Yes. First criteria is if the publication has made um, not made by you, it was acquired by you and for some fraudulent means or somebody else and made the publication. In that case, uh, case you get a grace period of one year. If you have uh, communicated uh, your invention in uh, to some government office or uh, suppose some government agency has. Uh, uh, given you fund for uh, for that invention and you have, you have com communicated your invention uh, through uh, uh, as a part of the annual report and it got leaked from there then you get this one year grace period and if there is a government program where the government has already produced a notification that all the things which is uh, published or exhibited in this program that will get the grace period only then you get that uh, one year grace period Otherwise, you don't get any grace period. If you have made the publication, the invention is gone. Then you cannot go for patent. It's already in. Thank you, Madam. Uh, there is no more question. Uh, no more question. I have this. Okay. Uh, thank you, on second, Madam. Uh, now we will start our valedictory session. Madam, can you stay with us for a while? We will start our. No, no, I have another meeting to attend. Okay. Pleasure delivering okay. lecture. Thank you. I'm okay. leaving. Okay. okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, okay, now we will start our valedictory session. Um, I would like to request our head of the department, Professor Dr. Sunil Boron Puja, sir, to give valedictory speech. Sir, please. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So, it has been an honor uh, to be a part of this delightful faculty development program. And we have reached the end of these uh, five days program on industrial wastewater management. So, these five days have brought together intelligent minds with lots of information ideas and have shared wealth of experiences and knowledges so on behalf of uh, our chemical engineering department of Haldia institute of technology i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude towards the higher authorities like particularly the chief patron patrons, members of our advisory committee for their continuous inspiration and support. But words are uh, not enough to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Siddharth Bokshi, Dr. Borna Libej for successfully con coordinating the event. I am also thankful to Dr. Onupam De of mathematics department for his uh, allowed cooperation. I wish to extend my sincere thanks to all the organizing faculty members of the department for their continuous effort, what they have put uh, into making it is a successful one. My sincere gratitude to amazing guest speakers like uh, Mr. Santonu Sen, Senior Manager, Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Holdia. Mr. Asit Mitro, Deputy General Manager, Holdia Petrochemicals Limited. Mr. Pranob Sinha Mahapatro, Senior Manager, Mitsubishi Chemicals. Professor Amitabha Vandopadhyay, Professor Department of Chemical Engineering, Calcutta University. And Last but not the least, Srimati Sangeeta Sengupta, Scientist, Patent Information Center, for giving their valuable time to us. And also thanks to all the wonderful participants, without which this would not have been possible. Uh, although we have gained some knowledge and few new ideas, and for me particularly, it is sad to know that we shall be closing it, bidding farewell to my friends and associates. However, uh, it is a privilege 
an honor to be entrusted with such an important task at a gathering of such eminent people from different parts of the country uh, in the field of chemical engineering or uh, you can say in the field of academia. So once again, I would thank all uh, for your all for your wonderful cooperation and participation. Uh, thank you all and have a good day. Thank you, sir. Now, dear participants, we are almost to the end of our session. And I would like to request, uh, I would like to thank all of our participants for attending this event. And regarding today's exam, uh, actually exam and feedback, feedback I, we will share two links in the WhatsApp group. And one link will be for the uh, exam of this week. Another link will be uh, for the feedback as well as the today's attendance. And we will share this in the WhatsApp group. And uh, regarding uh, the total links, will it will be active for up, uh, today midnight. After midnight, you can feel it. With this, we are ending our session here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. One more thing, uh, there is uh, regarding the certificate. Uh, dear participant, you will receive your certificate within 10 days from today. Thank you.